I have an idea. Let's get hyper. Yes. Hyper. That's the best way to describe it. Hyper color animated style anime rushing light beams. It will make sense later. What I have today is a project from GigaRobo. It's a gigantic anime robot battle game. And that provides an interesting space. It's something that doesn't exist as much in the miniature painting hobby as you would think it would. The more anime style of sculpting. Um, it, it leaves a lot of room, a lot of uh, kind of flat planes. Very useful to have the airbrush. Um, I think most of the attention gets sucked up into the Gundam community, but GigaRobo stands in kind of unique position, and it was really fun to work on this project. I was able to pull in some drop shadow. Um, it just it just had me thinking more about an animated style. Uh, a lot of the time in miniature painting, we are trying to achieve a level of believable realism, but we're all fans of animated movies, maybe manga, comic books, the series Berserk, um, best soundtrack ever. So it had me working in a design space that was a little outside of my norm, which is always a welcome task. I'm happy to step outside and find a new piece that will offer some ways to try something different, challenge myself in a new way, chase the muse. Also, the game's creator, Alex, does all the artwork. I was given complete creative control on this. I could have painted it purple or brown or whatever, but I wanted to share the designs that Alex sent along just to show there's more than one way to peel an egg. But without any further ado, let's get cooking. The first thing that I like to do with a little bit of white loaded up into my airbrush is just lock my light source in place. Just very gently spraying some highlights, controlling this the angle, so going at a downward facing. Some of this will be covered up in the future, but for now, I just want to get this light situation identified a little bit, and it will help my other layers kind of find their volumes a little more quickly. The important thing is just to go very slowly, and very gently with the airbrush. The temptation is high to just douse the surface like a flamethrower because it's very fun to use, but just very, very slow and gentle because you need the paint to be heavily diluted so it can come out in a very smooth, atomized spray. But the more the water is diluted, the more likely it is to spread out if you hover in one area for too long. So just be very gradual, very gentle. Just like with the hand brush, many thin layers will achieve a smooth result. See, now it's starting to take after the second pass, now that there's something to grab onto. Sometimes the airbrush will become a little clogged, so you may want to just pull all the way back on the hammer to just push any excess paint out that may be building up. Using it in this very soft and gentle approach can lead to clogs. So just every once, in, every once in a while you want to clear the chamber, as they say. And I'll be giving the arms similar treatment. It's a nice, smooth, top-down spray. With the light source locked in place and me remembering to wear my glove, this next step might seem a little strange, but I have some Necrotech Green from P3. This will be my pretty much the brightest color in this equation. Um, I just like to lock the brighter tones in place when I'm airbrushing and kind of work around the angles and, and bring the shadows up from the depths. You'll see as we go on, I think the uh, There'll be a little proof in the pudding when it comes to that process. But for now, I'm just spraying a very thin coat, just the brightest green, just targeting the same areas that I brightened with that white pass. 
it's okay if there's a little bit of mess. I still have a lot of uh, shadows to bring up. So once again, just going in, making sure that all these highlights I laid in are showing their brightest and best. Clear the chamber a bit. Back to work. Okay, now with that nuclear green locked in place, I have some coal black and I'll be shading this traditionally. I'm just going to work up from the darker areas up to the light. And I threw a little bit out of the palette cam because it's feeling left out. But I guess that will help to display the colors that I'm using. We'll get to some brushwork eventually. Gonna get this first shadow established. Now we're getting somewhere pretty neat. I'm gonna go and as carefully as I can work a little bit of IOS and green into all the mid zones very diluted that's going to come out <laughs> very uh, quickly and out of control. Let me just tighten up that needle a little bit. Try to open this up as narrowly as possible. So very, very gradually. Just kind of working this like a glaze in between these blends, that coal black to that Necrotech green, and I'm pulling kind of a deeper secondary shadow in the inside of his ankle there, the inside of his leg. Because mainly I want the light coming straight on from this direction, so most things on the other side would be just a little bit darker. So I'll tone these highlights down just by spraying right over them. Let that dry for a moment. Wait. Now I will let that dry for a moment. Taken by the hand and just wrap this mid-tone right around this gradient zone. So many zones, so many gradients, but you get the picture. Basically the lesson here is don't forget the arms. go through all right and let's go through one more time very gently applying this mid-tone many thin layers
here our hero stands following the airbrushing stage. Now I have some smaller areas to color block in. I'll be sectioning those out with some Vallejo neutral gray as well as neutral gray with some black mixed in. And even his uh, visor and stomach plate will be painted with sand yellow. I will get these areas taken care of and we will be back in a flash. Color blocking stage complete. I wanted to start bringing more of this anime style into play. Get a wet blended gradient in place here. But what I'm trying to do is stay close to the artwork and get this kind of animated, uh, more comic book style. I already previously got to mess around on a spare cast of this model, luckily, so I have a little bit better idea of what I want to be doing. But you can see just controlling the volume, painting these just wider tracks of light in place, and making sure that those are very saturated. I have to kind of follow the, the curve of whichever object I'm painting on top of. Yeah, just like so. And we'll pull a little secondary reflection into play. This could really go a variety of ways because I'm trying to paint in this particular kind of stylized fashion. It's really up to, there's a lot up to interpretation, but just making it cool is going to be my main goal. I think that's always my main goal, but we're going for a certain style in this case. Once I have that area highlighted once with the neutral gray, I'll bring in my white mixed with neutral gray, just a little bit, kind of pull it into these reflective lines, but not drag it all the way through. So I get this very kind of fine line. I guess this is a cell shaded style. Um, not truly 100%, but, but style is a relative term, so it will be what I make it. And again on this knee, just kind of this stylized uh, semi-gloss. I wouldn't call it a non-metallic metal, but the way that light interacts with metallic surfaces is definitely serving as a as a guide here. It is to uh, replicate a semi-gloss after all. But yeah, we'll have kind of one finer reflective line running through and then a larger area that gives way to a, a bit of a blend. And as I'm giving this treatment to these deep gray sections, I also want to give some attention to the other lighter gray areas. So again, I'll pull that lighter gray mixture, that white and neutral gray combination, pull that into play, just like so. I might want to pull in a bit of a white highlight there, but I think I'm just going to let it sit for a second and be observed. On these little uh, chrome exhaust pipes, just paint this line directly in place. It's kind of a secondary channel of light once again.
maybe take from this deeper gray, paint that along the midsection, working in a sort of sky earth reflection. So as this, there's a facing angled towards the ground and there's a facing angled towards the sky. A little bit of light will be bouncing up off of the ground, but more light will be coming down much more intensely from up above. And then we'll pull in a fine line of white just at the very top, a small amount of an edge highlight. It's kind of capping off the upper facing, this upper angle of the semicircle. And similarly, all of these light gray areas will get the same stylish touch, except I'm just moving up in the spectrum a little bit, operating in a brighter range of color. Just to provide that subtle separation, I still want to add kind of a stylish diagonal tilt to all the, all the blends. And I'll even go up to pure white. So I have at least three colors creating this a gradient. Also on these two meager yellow plates, I have a little bit of P3's Bloodstone. I'll be combining that with the sand yellow from Vallejo and just shading down a bit. Honestly, with this approach, I probably should have started with a darker base coat because it is a lot about just laying some thick, saturated, heavy lines on top of a darker surface. I think it's easier to manage that way, so I will just darken the yellow panels a little bit before I add those stylish highlights. But luckily these yellow areas are very small, so I'm not going to have to waste too much time backtracking on anything. Now that I have most of these areas loosely defined, I still have final highlights to lay down, but you can see in some areas I've already started to lay down some panel lining. I'm taking my Vallejo Black, P3's Coal Black, and just a small amount, a touch of water, using a very finely pointed brush and as gently as I can sweeping the tip right into the crevice holding my breath as I go in between brush strokes because I want to be steady as possible but it is as difficult as it looks it's going to take a little bit of trying take some patience, but I think the look is worth it in the end. It really frames things up nicely, especially with these larger armor panels. So I'm going to go ahead and just dark line every crevice. I'll have to get his fingers and forearms. I'm going to get to know this model in a very detailed way. With all the black lining complete, I've added some necrotite green to my palette. It's a nice bright limey green. And all of these upward facing edges, I'll be giving them a quick solid highlight. Just an all over edge highlighted pass on the model. But also, some of these downward facing angles. I still want to pick out the edges to convey, you know, more of a that animated look. But I'll dip down to my darker green so I can still edge highlight these these areas that are in deeper shadow. Still kind of create some definition. Alright, this next stage is the stage that I have been waiting for. My chance to really add that stylish high gloss marker line sort of animated effect to these green plates. I have a second cast of this model that I got to attempt to find my uh, light source on. 
a little bit. It's not perfect, but it gave me a chance to kind of get my stroke down and work out how I wanted some of these glossy lines to appear. I like this more toned down version on the back, just three lines instead of overpopulating the surface, but we'll see, I want some of these, these secondary emerald green reflections in some of the recesses as well, so I've had a little bit of practice. Let's see if I screw it up. Let's give this leg a shot. So a little bit of white, some necrotech, necrotite, some necrotite green, a little more. So I'm gonna have to stay on target and go over this, these lines a few times to get a nice saturated take of this color. So I'm mixing up a healthy amount and let's give it a shot. You can always just redo the entire paint job, right? Alright, so we'll drag it down ever so slightly. Take a stylish little buck out in this direction. Come curving back. Taper off towards the heel. Eh? Not bad. Let's let that sit and dry. I can fatten it up a little bit. Um, increase the saturation. Let's just get another little kind of stylish S in place there. Not too bad. All right. I'm gonna need you to focus your energy on my brush. Let's try this chest area. Come out ever so closely to the center. And then just, just like so. It's not bad, and that is good. We'll give this, put a little kick on this ankle, shin plate. So I'm, I still have another stage of edge highlights to add to this. Probably two more stages adding greater amounts of white. but you can see where this is going. I'm just setting things up. Now the tricky part is producing that exact same brush stroke. Get a nice saturated line in place. I'm liking it though. This is something fun and brand new to try. So that one was a little, little trickier. Let's try to round it out. Just take a thicker amount of paint. There. So the trick here is really locking your light source in place. There is a specific direction that the light is coming from, the direction that I'm, I'm facing him towards the camera. This is, this is my photography angle, maybe a little bit tilted to the side. Let's drop it down a shade. Just the slightest glint. Right in there. I'm into it. It's, it's very tempting and easy to overdo this. But just remember, see the forest through the trees. Sometimes a smaller hint can provide a lot of uh, a lot of stimulation to the viewer's imagination. Yeah, we'll say it like that. Just be sure not to overdo it. I do want to add just a little more attention to the collarbone here. Let's bring this bright color all the way across the top of the pad carefully.
Excellent. So now I can also continue this highlight color into some of these edge highlights. Let's take a little bit off. All right. Make sure that they, they taper off. I'm not completely covering up those uh, previous layers. See, this is why you don't want to add too many of those shimmering shines. You still have a lot of edge highlighting to contend with. A lot more action taking place on the corners of these, these plates. All these divides okay I still have more of these reflective shimmers to place about the model but I think you're getting the idea so let's just focus our attention on the chest and start raising this up brightening up the kind of upper portion of that little twist just adding more and more white, covering a smaller and smaller area. Maybe I can even, let's just kind of deliberately place some portions, just like these reflections were formed. Place some kind of hypergloss shining dots. Make it look a little extra reflective. Next on the agenda was creating a bit of a dramatic... Next on the agenda was the task of creating a bit of a dramatic drop shadow. I don't often do drop shadows, but leaning into the animated style of this piece it seemed very appropriate and offered a fun chance to do just that. So after squaring the model up roughly underneath a lamp, a single lamp, casting a shadow in various places, I decided where I wanted my light source to be coming from exactly. Gently kind of traced it in place and then wound up with this roughly hewn base that you see before you today. On the palette, I have some Vallejo deck tan as well as some Vallejo black and some bloodstone from P3. Correction. Prussian blue from Vallejo as well. What I want to do is create a colder version of this black and bloodstone mixture to be inside of the shadow proper. Next, I also want to mix up pure black and bloodstone and try to get this on a brighter tonal value. Add just a little bit of the deck tan. So as we cross the distance towards the back side of the base, things are getting slightly darker, keeping that maximum depth located where the shadow is falling. And then from the front angle, I want things to be much brighter, kind of adding a bit of momentum to the piece, with him uh, dashing forward and jumping on one foot for joy seems appropriate to kind of emphasize that forward facing all that momentum and motion and I want to create this I'm doing this on the fly but I want this kind of streaked effect that you know you see in a lot of um, anime kind of gives these like bolts of light kind of a charging forward look so that's what I would like to roughly carve in place see just how uh, whoops way too much black that was an accident but we'll see how successful I am who knows maybe maybe that black jumped onto the base for a reason just use that to kind of deepen these points of the uh, shadow where the object is making closest contact to the surface Alrighty, let me gussy this up and we will jump back. 
All right, now, so as I'm working, I see the opportunity to drag a bit of a drop shadow from these stones. You can see I got a little more tame with that forward-facing uh, light texture striation. We'll come back to that, maybe, but yeah, does not need to be that heavy. But behind these little stones, Trace a bit of a long shadow, just like so. Excellent. Fortify these a little bit. Of course, I need to blend a bit of a shade onto the back side. Now, with my basic gradient kind of uh, light situation set up in place. Just committing to a little bit of time, smoothing, rendering things, just increasing the saturation. Maybe now is a better time for some of those active motion lines. Just lay them in sort of a thin, glazy style. Let this area dry a bit before I attempt another one of those. I do have the model present, and I like what that adds to the situation. Although I may want to dial the angle of that pointed shoe in a little bit. Let's move that over. It's ending up more in this kind of direction. And we'll just color match and correct. That'll be our little secret. I'll slowly blend that in, cover it up a bit. Let's recheck. That makes more sense to me. Now also, there are some areas of this uh, pavement that are in the shadow, but they need a bit of a highlight. So taking my deck tan, combining it with that cool mixture of base tone so whatever I bring out just has a slightly colder shadowed nature to it we'll highlight a bit of this kind of grainy texture and rubbly bits sweep a little paint off of the brush and just kind of use the side of it well that's not enough use the side of it to Take it out very slightly. It might take a couple of passes. I also have the same situation to attend to in these lighter areas. Okay, let's bring some speed lines into play. Make sure they're all going in the same direction. Maybe the more subtle touch is just what the doctor is after. Fucking doctor tones. All right. Better. Yeah, it's, it's a little off on the uh, the rotation. But yeah, I like those those motion lines. I think it would be a nice stylish touch to have one go right underneath his foot. So don't worry, this big fat shoe will be eating that up. And just laying down a very small amount of paint, stretching it out, pushing it backwards until it takes on a glaze-like thinness. Again, just saturating this these deeper tones painting them in between these speed lines as they've been dubbed just kind of accenting that motion very cool kind of have some darker lines maybe extending even further back from these small stones 
And who knew applying three pieces of basing material would be become such a focus. Now I want to increase the brightness of these pieces in the shadows just a little bit. And I also want to make some enhancements to those speed lines. Just building up the saturation even more, but you can see I'm starting to concentrate my efforts even closer to the front of the base. Yeah, just like so. Fan it out a little bit. Got this general gradient going on from the facing to the back side. We also have this drop shadow to contend with. It's coming together nicely. With that roughly staged up, let's take a bit of the bloodstone. Slight amount of black in there, but it won't matter for our purposes. I'm going to over dilute this in a sense, you know, make a very kind of thin, puddly version because I want to make some puddles. I'm just going to lay down some, some stains here and there on the base. I'll press my brush onto my paper towel, draw the moisture out with my mouth. Every part of the body is a tool. And then my spongy brush, I will go in as best I can, pick up all the moisture in the center. It's tricky because you want to let it sit and stain the underside, but if you let it stay for too long, it might just turn to shit on you. But we want to do a few layers of this to just kind of crisscross, intersect this texture, make sure everything is from the, the previous pass is, is dry before you start making these little intersections. Decent. Take a little bit of that. Take a little creative freedom with this rusty stain. And again, just add to the gradient leading towards the back side of the base. And maybe even streak it up. I still do want to add another stage of highlights towards the front end. Decent. Let that dry. Okay, all dried out. Just add a few random spots of color. Make it very, very small. Just kind of adding to that stained street or docking facility. I don't know, wherever we, we find ourselves on this virtual fighting stage. And you guessed it, drag those highlights up one more time. Layer after layer after layer, oh baby. Don't want to overdo it, so in some areas I will just concentrate more on softly blending. It's a brighter edge. And this helps to subdue some of the crappiness of, of those stains. We want to 
work in layers of, of subtlety and kind of push that to the bottom, but it does add a little hint of, of grit and reality to the, to the project. And just to push things a little bit further, I'm going to brighten up the rear side of the drop shadow. The idea being where the model makes landfall and connection to the surface, that is where the strongest shadow will lie. And as it trails off and the light is able to come underneath the model, the rear side of the shadow will be just a little bit brighter. And it gives me a chance to pull this nice, complementary, vibrant, um, rusty brown tone into play. Okay, not too bad. Let's finish off the model. Final round on the model proper. I uh, took him off of his handling plinth so I could check the drop shadow. I have one stage left. Just need to add some final white highlights to everything. Not the perfect way to paint, but that's the truth, my friend. So I've got a little bit of Liquitex titanium white on the palette. I think you all know the score by now. Just capping off, concentrating on just the edge highlights, maybe a few of the, the shimmer shines. Check out my video, Edge Highlighting Mastery, in the beginner's section. If you really want to zoom in on some edge highlights. But yeah, wherever there's a bright upward facing highlight, let's get the tiniest touch of the white. And also, a lot of these non-metallic metal areas, granted they are purposefully rendered in more of a cartoonish style, they will receive some of their final highlighting. Let's put a little dot on the upper corner of every knuckle on every hand. These small gun barrels will get a final touch of the purest titanium white. But really we just want to set everything off, finalize the highlights, maybe lay them down multiple times to make sure I get a nice, true and pure, saturated, very vibrant highlight. I think that's especially important for this more animated style. But yeah, I'm going to go to work. And we'll see this bad boy when he is finished off. Yeah, buddy. Fully painted, ready for battle. I, too, dream of a day in the future when I can mount automatic weapons into my forearms, mouth, and eyes. A couple more Patreon posts, and I'll be ready for that surgery. So, thank you for your support. Please log any uh, comments, questions, interfere, concerns in the section below. I'm happy to hear from you as the supporters of this Patreon. So go out into that world. Paint a robot. Remain unchained.